Problem three on the exam, on the finals, that is, is probably my favorite because it looks pretty tricky at first. I mean, it looks quite daunting, but it has a very nice solution development. It's really fun, and it's based on a technique where we break up this nested radical. So we're going to take the integrand, which is the square root of x squared plus 1, plus the square root of x to the 4 plus x squared plus 1, and we, we want to express it as the sum of two different radicals, where the arguments are a and b, and we have to determine a and b in terms of x. And what follows is just some nice algebraic manipulation. So squaring both sides of the equation, this means that we have x squared plus 1 plus the square root of x to the 4 plus x squared plus 1 equal to a plus twice the square root of the product of a and b plus b. And comparing both sides of the equation, we find that a plus b should be equal to x squared plus 1, and twice the product, the square root of the product, should be equal to the square root of x to the 4 plus x squared plus 1. And I want to now square this equation. So that will give me 4ab equal to x to the 4 plus x squared plus 1. And if we square this equation, we might get some nice structure as well. We're going to get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared plus b squared equal to x to the fourth power plus 2x plus 1. And I probably should have numbered these equations, but okay, what the hell. So if I subtract these two equations from each other, and I might as well use a different color to make things easier, easier to spot later. So we have a squared, subtracting this one from this one, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared equal to, uh, you're going to lose the x to the fourth powers. Okay, that's nice. And this was a square here. And we're going to get x squared. That's it. That's pretty much it. And we know what the left-hand side is. That is a minus b whole squared. And this equals x squared, which implies that x equals a minus b. That is pretty damn cool. That is pretty awesome. So we know how to express x in terms of a and b in a very simple manner, but now we need a and b in terms of x. And I'm going to need some more algebraic manipulation for that. And that doesn't seem too hard, does it? I mean, I remember having this equation as well. We had uh, a squared, oh, sorry about that. We had a plus b being equal to x squared plus 1. So adding them up implies that you have a being equal to x squared plus x plus 1 times 1 half. And for b, the case is pretty similar as well. All you have to do is subtract um, 1 subtract this equation uh, this equation from this equation in the manner of the arrows. You get what I'm trying to say. So this means that b would be equal to 1 half of x squared minus x plus 1. So that's really cool. So that means we can express our integral i as the integral from one, negative 1 half to positive 1 half of 1 half, and we have this factor 1 half outside, and we have the square root of x squared plus x plus 1 dx, and we can express it as another very simple uh, integral from negative one-half to positive one-half of the square root of x squared minus x plus one dx. Now these two integrals are pretty easy to evaluate because all you, need, all you need to do is complete the square of the argument and then perform some nice substitutions. And there's something wrong here. Wait, if this was, if this was a and this was b, and you have to square root them, then that means you're going to get square roots of 2 as well. Okay, nice. So let's call this integral i sub 1, and i sub 1 equals the integral from negative 1 half to positive 1 half of the square root of this thing here. And you can write this as the square root of x plus 1 half squared plus 1 minus 1 half squared. So that's 1 minus 1 fourth. That's 3 by 4. Okay, nice. So you have the structure in place to perform a nice hyperbolic substitution. So if we let x plus 1 half equal the cinch of u, this implies the dx. No, wait, we don't just need the cinch. We need square root 3 by 2 of the cinch of u. So this implies the dx equals square root 3 by 2 
Koch U D U. As far as the limits are concerned, if you let x approach negative one by two, then you get a limit of zero. Okay, nice. And if you let x approach uh, one by two, you get a limit of one. So taking the inverse cinches, uh, multiplying by two times the square root, two divided by the square root of two as well on each side, you get what I'm trying to say, right? I hope you're following. So that means the limits evaluate out to zero and the inverse cinch of two by the square root of three. And you're left with a square of the cinch of u plus one with a square root three by two factored out, the square of it factored out, so that means three by four. Okay, nice, everything's in the square root and you have the differential element as well. And the cosh u term du, okay, that was a lot of stuff going on, but yeah, I haven't messed up. So inverse cinch of two by the square root of three, and you're left with a three square root three by two, square root three by two. So that's three by four outside. And you have a square of the cosh function, square rooted, so that gets rid of the square, and cosh times cosh is the square of the cosh of u. Oh, that was, that was something. Okay, nice. And I'll let you fill in the details for I sub 2, where you had this uh, minus x term instead of the positive x term. So this one will evaluate out to 3 by 4 times the integral of the inverse cinch, uh, the negative of the inverse cinch of 2 uh, by square root 3 to 0 of the square of the cosh of u du. Now that we've painted our pretty pictures, we can piece together a solution. So we have these factors of 1 by square root 2 that we cannot forget. So we can factor them out. So 1 by square root 2, we can also factor out the 3 by 4s. And we have the integral. Now we have one in integral from 0 to the inverse cinch and one integral from the negative of that inverse cinch to 0. So just combine them into a single integral. So you have the integral from negative inverse cinch of 2 by square root 3 to positive inverse cinch of 2 by square root 3 of the square of the cosh of u du. And there's a nice relation between the squares of the cosh and the, uh, the square of the cosh and the cosh of the double angle, similar to the double angle formula from, from circular trigonometry. And for that, again, you need a factor of two, so a factor of one half outside to balance things out, and you're left with three, three by eight times the square root of two, times the integral from negative something to positive something, you get what we have to write. So uh, two times the square of the cosh of u equals one plus the cosh of two times u, and we're integrating with respect to u. And this integration is pretty simple. All you're left with is u plus the cinch of two u divided by two, and the limits are negative inverse cinch of two by square root three and positive inverse cinch of two by square root three. And I'll let you fill in the details for yourself. All you need is the logarithmic de definition of the inverse cinch function and some simplification and you'll be good to go. And I'll just write down the final answer. So square root seven by two times square root two plus 3 by 4 times square root 2 uh, times the natural logarithm of 2 plus square root 7 by 3 plus some homework for you.